Dune is a strategy board game set in Frank Herbert's Dune universe, published by Avalon Hill in 1979. The game was designed by Billy Burl, Jack Kittredge and Peter Olicar. History The game was originally designed with a Roman Empire theme, with the name Tribute. Avalon Hill had acquired the license to produce a Dune game, and contacted a Burl, Kittredge and Olic Carr when their own design proved unusable. Elements suitable for the Dune universe were added to the game, particularly from their earlier game of Cosmic Encounter. In 1984, to tie in with the Dune film, Avalon Hill published a second edition of the game as well as two expansions, Spice Harvest and The Duel. The Spice Harvest expansion changes the initial setup of the standard game by adding a pre-game in which the factions lobby for control of the interworld spice market in order to purchase a more advantageous initial position for the start of the main game. The duel adds leader tokens representing the primary leaders of each faction and a secondary board representing a circular arena for one-on-one -on -one combat. Leaders may fight individual combat using a special deck of cards for movement and attacks. Both supplements included additional treachery cards. Both supplements are also incorporated into the French edition published by Jeux Descartes. In addition, Avalon Hill's strategy magazines, The General and Heroes, published counters and rules for three additional factions. The Benata Lilacs, the Ixians, and the Landsrad factions, organizations appearing in Frank Herbert's original novels. The game was reprinted by Fantasy Flight Games in 2012 as Rex. Final Days of an Empire. Fantasy Flight was able to acquire the rights to the system used in Dune, but were not able to get the license for the Dune setting. As a result, the game's setting was switched to Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium universe. Gameplay. Players take on the role of one of the power groups in the politics of the planet Arrakish. The game board, which represents the planet, is split into a number of territories, five of which are strongholds. Players move their units from territory to territory, and if two or more players enter the same territory, a battle ensues and the contest is resolved using a hidden bidding system. Victory in the game is achieved by controlling a specified number of strongholds, either alone or in an alliance with other players. In addition to the areas, the game board is divided into radial sections, and the planet's permanent storm moves along those sections, destroying any troops in its path. Each turn, one territory produces a spice blow, which places an amount of spice in that territory. An auction is held each turn in which players can purchase treachery cards. These cards contain a variety of uses such as weapons and defenses, which can be used as advantages in resolving battles. Each player has five leader tokens of varying strengths. Leaders are used in combat to supplement the strength of their units. However, each player has a traitor among the other player's leaders, so using leaders can be a risk. Leaders can be killed in combat, but players may use spice to buy dead leaders back from the Benator Lilac tanks. Combat When a territory is contested, each player in the contest chooses in secret to sacrifice a number of their troops in that territory. Each unit sacrifice gives them a base score of 1. Leader tokens add to the strength of their side, provided it survives the attack by the opposing leader. Attacks and defenses affecting leaders are chosen in secret by the players from their available treachery cards. Once both players have chosen their strategies, they reveal the number of units, leaders and items used. If the player has chosen their opponent's traitor, they are defeated. Otherwise, if a player has used a weapon against which the other player has not used a defense, their opponent's leader is killed. If a laser is used against a shield, all units and leaders are killed from both sides. Otherwise, the scores are then added together, and the player with the lower score is defeated. The player with the higher score, while victorious, still must lose the number of units they planned in their strategy. Factions Each faction has unique powers which modify the rules. 
both the default abilities and the optional, additional character advantages, are included below. House Atrides In many cases when bids are performed blind, the Atrides player may use prescience to view the object of the bidding. The Atrides player may also use prescience to look at the next spice blow card and force their opponents to reveal one element of their battle plan. The Bene Gesserit The Bene Gesserit player may coexist with other players' units without causing a confrontation, and may command other players to use or not to use certain cards during combat. At the beginning of the game the Bene Gesserit player secretly records the name of another player and the turn at which they think that other player will win the game. If the Bene Gesserit correctly guesses who will win and when, they win the game instead. The Emperor The Emperor has five elite units that are twice as effective as ordinary units, although they lose this bonus against the Freeman. When the other players buy treachery cards, they pay the Emperor. The Freeman The Freeman have three elite units, move faster on the board, and only suffer half losses from the storm, which they can predict the movement of. As their armies are already on a rakish, they need not pay shipping costs to the guild. Their troops are not killed if a worm appears, instead, they can ride the worm to a location of their choice. If no one has one after 15 turns and certain strongholds are either unoccupied or occupied by the freemen, they win. The Spacing Guild The Guild player receives the payment when other players transport units onto the board, while paying only half for transporting themselves. They can ship units around the planet, or even send them back to their reserves. They can choose to take their turn at any point during a turn. If no one has won after 15 turns, and the Freemen don't win, the guild does. House Harkonnen When the Harkonnen player buys a treachery card, they receive a second one free, and they can hold twice as many. Where the other players have one traitor, they have many. Whenever they win a battle, they may kill or temporarily capture a random leader from the loser. Each faction also grants some aspect of their powers to their allies. Winning a faction or alliance of factions wins by controlling three of the five strongholds at the end of a turn. In a game with only two factions the winning faction must control four strongholds. Many players adhere to a house rule in which unallied factions can win by controlling three strongholds but alliances of two or more factions must control four strongholds in order to win. This win condition does not appear in the official rules. Three other winning conditions exist. The Freeman win at the end of turn 15 if no faction has won the game by the normal criteria and the occupancy of certain strongholds meets certain constraints. This win condition represents a situation where the Freeman have prevented interference with their own plans for Dune. The guild wins if, at the end of turn 15, no faction has won via the conventional win, and the Freeman win conditions are not met. This win condition represents the situation where the guild has preserved the status quo on Dune and may continue to provide shipping services. The Bene Gesserit win if, after a faction or alliance has succeeded in a conventional win, they reveal that they predicted that that faction would win in that turn. The Bene Gesserit need only predict one of the winning players in the event of an alliance win. This win condition represents the situation where the Bene Gesserit have manipulated the situation so that their hidden agenda is fulfilled. The Bene Gesserit cannot predict the Freeman or Guild turn 15 default wins. However, they may predict that the Freeman or the Guild will win in turn 15 by the normal majority stronghold occupancy criteria.